In this video we're going to see how to save data from an Android application to Firebase using the Kotlin programming language. I've talked about Firebase before in some prior videos, so I'll leave the full explanation for that, but a quick reminder of what Firebase is. Let's say we have a device and that device has a piece of information. We can store that information on Firebase, which is essentially a cloud-based database. But it's not a database in the typical SQL terms. It's more a document store that's storing documents in a JSON format. One really nice thing is that Firebase understands what a DTO is and knows how to convert a DTO into JSON. So we store our data up in the Firebase cloud. It comes from our device to Firebase. But then what's nice is any other device that has our application on it can be notified that the data in the cloud has changed. So we can push notifications down to those devices as well. And Firebase does a good job of handling offline and online synchronization. So it knows if you're offline, it's going to store the data until you are online, and then it's going to publish it up to Firebase. So let's start this project as we've started our other Firebase projects. We go to firebase.google.com. We choose Add Project. Uh, project name, I'm going to call this Plant Places uh, fire, uh, Kotlin, rather, like so. And uh, all of this is fine. And I will say, yeah, accept. Um, you know, use your judgment on clicking these boxes. I go ahead and say Create Project. We'll give this just a moment. Now our project is ready, so we choose Continue. Now Firebase, let's add Firebase to our Android app. Okay, now we need to find some information, the package name, the app nickname, and if possible, a signing certificate. So let's run back and let's go to our build.gradle, and our application ID is this. So we'll go ahead and control C this, and we'll run back, and um, Android package name, just like so, and Android nickname, we'll say plant places Kotlin. We're not going to need a debugging certificate for our purpose, so I'll go ahead and choose register app. We'll give it just a moment. Okay, now it says download Google Services JSON. Now the tricky part here is knowing where to put it. So we want to look under this app folder and we want to look at uh, basically the folder that contains build.gradle, ProGuard, Rules Pro, GitIgnore, AppIML, so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and download this Google Services JSON and just a moment. Now I've located the Google Services JSON folder uh, file on my hard drive. So I choose copy and now I'm going to go to our Kotlin project. I'm going to go to Kotlin files or project files rather, which will make this a little bit easier. And I remember I want it in this directory with the app IML, the build gradle and the ProGuard rules. So I'll go ahead, right click here and I'll choose paste. And sure enough, there's our Google Services JSON right where it needs to be. Now I know I need to change a couple of other things as well. I need to add a couple of dependencies. So I go to my build.gradle in the app folder and I'm going to add these two uh, Firebase dependencies and then simply hit sync now. Now it's not very happy with me because some of my library versions are off a bit. So use your judgment on that. Uh, it wants them all to be the same version, which can be a bit tricky at times. I'm going to move forward with what I have anyway. So in a previous video, I made this on click listener for our save button and we started to populate a specimen object here. I'm going to continue to use this method. If you don't have one, just make one. It's simply a button click handler. That's all. So within this method, I'm going to say Firebase database. Notice that it auto completes, which is a good sign. It indicates that my imports in my build gradle file have worked properly. So I'll say uh, var and then we'll say Firebase database equals, whoops, equals Firebase database. And we'll clean, uh, clean up a bit of spelling here. Our Firebase database equals Firebase database get instance. Now Firebase, Firebase database, I'm going to say get reference. So this essentially gets me a reference to a specific uh, part of this Firebase database. So get reference. And we're going to store this into our database reference. Now let's say database reference, just like so. And then we'll say dot child, which means under which branch do we want to store this? We'll say specimens, just like so. And then we'll say dot push, and then dot set value. And this is what we actually want to save, set value specimen. 
So what we're doing is we're saying take the specimen that we've assembled together and push it into our Firebase database. So one more thing we need to do then, just a few things we need to tidy up on our application. We've added the Google Services JSON. Okay, we have the information here, the uh, some dependencies that we've required, and it looks like I need a few more that I didn't indicate earlier. So let's go ahead and grab the supply plugin because that one's going to be easiest. So this goes in our module build doc radle. So we'll run back up. That's the file we were just in earlier. So just at the bottom of this, we need to add our uh, apply plugin just like so. Now, the next thing that we need to do is in the project level build Gradle, we need to add this class path entry. Uh, so I go back and boom, boom, double shift again, and we'll go to our build.gradle. But this time, instead of the one in app, we're going to the one in plain places Kotlin, just like so. And let's simply add a class path entry right here. And we should be in good shape now. Okay, now it's going to require synchronization. We want to go ahead and get that out of the way to make sure we haven't caused any issues. So let's go ahead and do that sync. While the sync is running, we can continue by adding our database to our application. So I choose next, run app to verify the installation. We'll let that go just a moment. Now I went ahead, I paused the video for a moment. I went ahead and deployed the application in the emulator. And sure enough, as soon as the application came up, I got this message, congratulations, you've successfully added Firebase to your app. So a little confirmation that we've put it in the right place. I'll go ahead and continue to console now, and we'll do a couple things. Authentication, uh, we want to set our sign up method. We should really use a true authentication like uh, either Google or Facebook or something like that, some kind of third party authentication. Uh, for the moment, I'm just going to go ahead and enable um, anonymous, which I'll turn off after I easy way for us to get uh, to get to test out our application, but you certainly don't want to allow anonymous in production. So if you're doing it as I'm doing it, just make it temporary. Now for database, I'm going to click on database and I'm going to choose uh, create database and we'll start in test mode, which again, anyone can read or write to our database. We want to change that to locked mode uh, as soon as we go, well, as soon as we can really. Not a good idea to leave this open any longer than needed. So I go ahead and choose enable, let this whirl for just a moment, and then I'll redeploy my app and we'll take a look. With the application deployed, I'm going to start typing in Eastern and we'll choose our Eastern Redbud Circus Canadensis. Location, we will say Sawyer Point, Cincinnati. Description, we'll say a beautiful specimen. And now I'm going to choose the Save button which lights up my Android Studio because it's taking me back to the debugger. Now let's take a look at what's going on. And again, this is using Kotlin, so I'm using the with uh, clause, which says with this thing called specimen, any operation that does not have a variable behind it, assume that the variable should be specimen. So we populate the plant name, the location, the description. All of that happens in one block. I go ahead and I choose F9. First of all, now I'll confess my first trial didn't go. I, I had to pause the video there. When I went to rules, I noticed that I had to change read and write from false to true to allow anybody to access this database. When I did it the first time around, I was on the cloud files Firestore. I have since switched to real-time database. So I just went to rules and I changed these both to true. And then I did a, a trial run with the video paused and I saw sure enough, I was able to add to uh, add something to the database. So if we go to specimens, here's our excellent, spe excellent specimen, Eastern Redbud Circus Canadensis. One other minor change that I made just for clarity with the video paused, I took the Firebase stuff out of the width block just to make it a little bit easier to debug through. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do now. I'm going to take away these uh, breakpoints and I want to run it live just so you can see how quickly the data goes from my device to Firebase. Let's take a look. So now I have both the Firebase database and my emulator up on the screen. I'm going to change the plant to another one of my favorites, which is the Paul Paul Assemina Triloba. I've changed a few other items to make this unique. So Spring Grove, Cincinnati, and an excellent native specimen. Now let me hit save and take a look at the Firebase database on the right. So I'm gonna click save on three, one, two, three, Boom. And you notice nearly instantaneously it has added this new entry, an excellent native specimen. 
Spring Grove, Cincinnati, you see it truncated a little bit, but it's all there. And then common pawpaw, asemina, triloba. So it comes up very quickly when we do this. When we do one more quickly, we'll just say uh, uh, red, uh, sure, red sunset maple. That's a good one. And save. And once again, you see nearly instantaneously when I hit save, it has synchronized and it's put it up here on Firebase. So that's part of the equation. Part of the equation is taking our data and putting it into Firebase. The other part is being notified when information changes on Firebase, and that will be the subject of our next video. One thing I want to point out, though, before we go into our next video is note what we're saving. We're saving this thing called specimen. And what is this thing called specimen? It's a specimen DTO object, which is something that we made in a previous video. It's not a string. It's not natively JSON. It's actually a DTO, or in other words, the type of class that we think of as a noun. A noun has attributes that describe it. Plant name, latitude, longitude, location, and description. So the nice thing about Firebase is that it understands that we're saving these things as DTOs, but it actually translates them to JSON and stores them in JSON on the Firebase site. So that's a look at Firebase. In the next video, we'll see how we can be notified when data changes on Firebase. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.